What's up everybody, it is Desiree LaCap, AK LaCapture, back on your screen with another dope video. You already know. I've gotten a lot of comments regarding coloring, how I colored this, how I color graded that. And to be honest with you, I never really saw myself posting tutorials on coloring because I never saw myself as a colorist. Let me tell you, that is an art in itself. We have full colorists for that, but I just have fun in the color grading process, so why not share what I know with y'all? So in this video, I will be breaking down this sequence that I filmed, edited, and colored just so you guys can apply it to any of your videos that you'd like. I'm gonna start with what my filming settings were first, just so you know. So my camera that I filmed with this particularly was a Sony a7S III with my Sigma 18 to 35 millimeter lenses. Yes, you may be wondering, why are you filming with a cropped censored lens on your full frame camera. So I actually don't turn on my settings for the APS-C lens mount just because sometimes I do like the vignetting, it is a vibe. Or I just punch in to 24 millimeter because it, it's not true 18 to 35 for my camera. So I filmed in 4K at 24 frames per second. My shutter was 1 over 50th, which is a 180 rule. I believe my f-stop was at the lowest at 1.8 and I also had a circular polarizer attached to my lens because I was working with reflections for those car shots and it did help with exposing the skies so those blues popped more and for my color profile I always shoot an s-log 3 and I make sure that my exposure is somewhere between plus 1.0 to 2.0 and nothing exposed after that or else I would kind of lose the detail in the highlights okay so now that we have my camera settings and what I filmed in I'm using Premiere Pro to color my footage. I typically do use DaVinci for long form, but because for short form, it's a little quicker for me to color. This is a sequence right here. I did before and after, before and after. And I knew when I was filming this, I wanted it to be super vibrant. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this clip specifically and I'm gonna color it. They're all fairly similar. I just needed to make adjustments to the highlights or the whites because some were brighter, some were darker. So let's get straight into it. This is what I'm working with here. So again, I film in S-Log3, so that's why it's super flat. And when I'm working, whether it is in Premiere or DaVinci, I always use adjustment layers and of course nodes to separate every color step that I do, just because I don't want it in one layer and having to click into effects controls and then turn off and on to see what I did. It's just easier having it visibly on my timeline. That way I know which one is which. Add a new adjustment layer, new item, adjustment layer, hit okay. I'm gonna drag and drop it on top of my layer. If you guys haven't watched my previous coloring tips in Premiere Pro, I did talk about adjustment layers and how I use them individually. My first adjustment layer is always my basic color correction. Basically my Rec 709, it's like bringing the realistic colors back into your clip, right? Because it's such a flat image, I wanna bring those colors back, the greens, the blues, and have it a little more vibrant. And because I know I always film in S-Log3, I've already created a lot for myself to drag and drop into all my clips every time. So it's Cinecolor S-Log3.cube. I'm just gonna drop that in there. As you can see, it did bring those colors back. So this is now and this is raw clip. Now we're starting to see some blues and some skin tones there. I'm gonna go ahead and add another adjustment layer on top. That's all for my first adjustment layer. I just drag and drop the LUT that I've created into that layer. My second adjustment layer is kind of just adding more shadows and contrast into it. So I always like playing around with the curves first before basic correction. It allows me to do a little more. So for my curves, we know that the bottom over here is your shadows, you have your midtones in the middle, and then you have your highlights at the top. So I'm always gonna wanna just crush my shadows down a little bit till I feel like it's right. You could either drag it from here, this corner right here, and you'll start to crush the shadows, and then kind of bring the midtones down, and the highlights up a little bit. 
before we play with the reds and the greens and the blues i'm gonna just keep going on with my color correction okay and then now i'm back into basic correction and i'm gonna crush the shadows down a little bit and this isn't exactly how i color correct i'm not this quick i'm more you know focused and tedious on when i'm coloring but for this tutorial i'm just gonna show you kind of my step-by-step -step process so because i know i'm gonna add that pro mist filter effect on my clip it's gonna brighten it up so much more that's why i'm crushing my shadows and my highlights down to add that pro mist filter or dreamy effect as other people would say without a filter on your lens we're gonna go ahead and duplicate our clip on top and on the top layer you want to go into effects and add gaussian blur drag and drop that onto there go into your effects control and then you want to hit your blend mode you want to change that to screen as you can see it brightened it up so much so just play around with your opacity and your blurriness so the blurriness is going to show you how much of that glow you want and the opacity is going to basically be the brightness of it so say i only did like 18 percent for the opacity but for the blurriness i cranked it all the way up to like to 150. So you can see that that is what makes that glow effect. Just finding that fine balance between everything, you're gonna go back eventually into each of the layers and fix it once you start color grading. As you guys could see, this does have that orange teal tone to it. So my third adjustment layer, I'm gonna start color grading it. And typically when you're color grading, you wanna stay on a hero shot. So I'm gonna stay on this shot right here. There you go. So we see some greens, we see some skin tones with some sun into it, some shadows into it. So that's kind of a key tip is to find your hero frame and color from that. My third adjustment layer, I'm gonna add some saturation and some vibrance here. So we're gonna crank up the vibrancy a little bit here. All right, for the third one, and then we're gonna give some saturation to it. We're gonna crank the saturation. And as you could see, it did kill my skin tone a little bit it's way too orange for my liking that's not my true skin tone so we don't want it to be that orange but i'm gonna keep the saturation boosted up we're gonna go down to curves and then we're gonna go under hue versus saturation i've talked about this before for hue versus saturation this is where you could kind of desaturate or increase certain colors in your clip so because i don't want it too orange here i'm gonna go ahead and create two points between the orange and I'm gonna drag it down. I'm gonna show you that's all the way down. We don't see no more orange. Now it looks weird, right? So we're gonna find that good middle point where it looks like sort of true to my skin tone. That's before and after very slight adjustments, as you can see, makes the biggest difference. I'm also gonna tone down the red just a tiny bit because my lips are a little too red for my liking. While I'm here, I'm gonna go ahead and increase the skies in the background. So we'll go at this frame here. We're just gonna go ahead and increase the blues. So without the hue versus saturation, this is kind of what it looks like with it, without it. I just like playing around with everything kind of back and forth. So with hue versus hue, it basically changes the tone and color of a specific color in your clip. So for example, I'm gonna create the two points between the blues. And as you can see, it'll change the color. So what I wanna do is I do wanna kind of put it towards like the turquoisey greenish tint right so we're gonna go ahead and bring it up there as for the orange and my skin tones we obviously don't want to really mess with it but i am gonna put it up a little bit okay so that's before and this is after basically this is what it is right now i went to go ahead and change my gaussian blur a little bit just so it's a little more brighter now that we have the vibrancy we're gonna add some orange and greenish tones so we're gonna go into creative we're gonna put our shadow tint towards that orange here between like the orange and the green and same with the highlight tint yep about right there it's a little blown out here so i like to go back into my first one bring the highlights down just a little bit give it a little bit of contrast and just kind of mess around with it in creative i'm gonna add some faded film just because I know I'm going to want that as well. You're just going to be playing around a lot with your curves. Slightest adjustment makes the biggest difference. And then our blues. I'm just going to take some blue away. Because when you 
take blue away, you introduce the green. It's basically how I colored this sequence, to be honest. You can mess around with the coloring and just remember that you have the choice to change certain colors in your clips, especially the skies or greens, but you do wanna watch out for some graininess. Like if you're color grading a sky and it's not that even, you're gonna have this grainy noise that you could see kind of over here because it is a little bit darker than the rest of the image. So you just wanna watch out for that. Okay, so overall, generally what you wanna do when you're coloring, either in Premiere or DaVinci or even Final Cut, is to use nodes or adjustment layers to help separate each step that you color. That way you know what you're doing. You can look at it before and after. Um, it's just more efficient doing it that way. Then to remember that I have my S-Log3 LUT down in the description below. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. And two, to remember not to mess with your exposure when you're color correcting or color grading because it's gonna affect the entire picture and create this dull look. Unless you are looking for that look, then go ahead. But to just mess with your contrast, your highlights, your shadows, your whites, your blacks, in the basic correction or in the curves using the white RGB curve. Third is when you want to saturate a certain color in your clip is to use your hue versus saturation and just create your pinpoints here to increase the saturation. For example, in the skies, making it more blue or in the trees, making it more green. In your hue versus hue is where you could change the color of the sky or the trees to a different blue or a different tone of green. So that's basically this video in a gist. I broke down this coloring process and then I gave you some tips and tricks on how you could change colors or add a certain look to it. So generally color grading is what brings your video to life. It really sets the tone of your entire film or clip. So I suggest to really practice on your color grading skills. I mean, I'm not saying to become a colorist or anything, but it does give your video a vibe. So if you enjoyed this video or if you took anything away from it, please, please like, share, comment, subscribe. I am really enjoying being able to share what I know with you guys. So if you do enjoy, please hit up my TikTok. I do post a lot more short form tips and tricks on there. I will be posting a ton more on my YouTube channel. So if you have anything that you wanna learn, whether it's coloring, composition, lighting, anything and everything, I'm down to let you guys know what I know and to pass on the skills and knowledge. So. I'll see y'all at the next video and I appreciate y'all for tuning in and I'm excited for your journey as a beginner videographer or a filmmaker, whatever it is that you want to become, you got it. All right. So I'll see y'all at the next video. Peace.